hello everyone we will continue with the overview of the course okay so in last class we have discussed about the topics on sampling methods so there in sampling methods and sample size we have uh, discussed that we will uh, cover the meaning of sampling then uh, aim of sampling then factors govern sampling method type of sampling terms commonly used in sampling sampling stages of textile material concept of critical difference fiber sampling from bulk fiber sampling from tapped sliver or roving or yarn because this sampling of fiber is from bulk or from tapped this is a tapped bulk is in the form of say uh, bell okay it's entirely different top this soft one okay from here we can take the sample okay but for from uh, the bell we have to take different precaution okay that those we will discuss and from sliver the sampling if we try to take it's entirely it is extremely tricky. Now, I will give one example we will although we will discuss later also. Suppose this is a tuft okay, where the fibers are randomly arranged okay, randomly arranged. So, we, we can pick up small quantity of Topped, okay. There, it's a it represent entire quality, entire because here we have short fibers, we have long fibers, everything is there, okay. But in sliver, if we see, they, these slivers are arranged in a particular order, say parallel use. Here, if we try to pick this fiber from the side, suppose I am trying to pick sliver uh, fiber from the surface, there the problem would be that the longer fiber will have more higher probability to be selected. That means, it will create a length biased sampling. On the other hand, if we try to pull the sample from the edge from the end then it will not create the length by a sample and detailed we will discuss and uh, then yarn sampling how to sample yarn then fabric sampling determination of sample size, test of significance and control chart and practical statistics. So, this will, will uh, be discussed all this uh, will be discussed in the sampling method and sample size that segment initial segment. Okay. Next we will start the actual testing of textile material, we will start with the evaluation of fiber length. different types of expressions of fiber length related characteristics like fiber lengths are expressed at with by different terms it's not the fiber length we sometime call it as mean length we can call it as span length span length is also the divided into various uh, terms 2.5 percent span length 50 percent span length okay and uh, this uh, staple length, upper half mean length, so upper quartile length, so various terms. Okay, this definition, these terms we will discuss in detail. Okay, and to, we will try to understand the importance of these terms and how to use these terms in practical, in actual application. Okay, meaning and relative importance of these terms. 
what are the meanings and what are the importance of these terms. Okay. Then methods of measurement, various methods of measurements are there okay, to test the fiber length okay, and their dispersion. These methods are first we will start with the hand stapling method, then Shardley photoelectric stapler. So, this uh, hand stapling method it is by hand we uh, quickly we come to know the length characteristics of the bulk of the material and its mechanized version is same characteristics we uh, measured here it is a staple length by Shirley photoelectric stapler it is a mechanized version we will discuss in detail. Then com sorter method where we test the effective length. Okay. Then single fiber length measurement. So, we will uh, we'll discuss the how to measure the single fiber length. Then length measurement by weighing method. We can take the mass and then based on the mass and uh, the class size, we can calculate the length of the fiber. Another weighing method is it is called clamped tapped method. Clamped tapped method it is used mainly for sliver and all this type, uh, type of fiber those are almost parallel in nature. So, here we use for if we want to test the length of the fiber from the sliver we use clamped tapped method. So, various methods they are used for different types of fibers. Then photoelectric method it is a very popular it is a widely used method it is called fibrograph method. So, where we get the span length or upper half mean length okay, this we will discuss in detail that means and related numericals also we will discuss. Okay. And in uh, photoelectric method main technique is that uh, tricks is that the sampling method how to produce the sample sample fiber sample and there to the students there are confusion how to test the how to uh, select the sample this detailed I will discuss here okay, photoelectric method and related numericals the things will be very clear okay, after this. Then where a fiber diagram it is a basically for for wool fiber. Okay. So, it is um, it works in the capacitance principle then wool fiber length by almeter. So, these are the uh, methods okay, is and in HVI also they use, but it is a it is a almost fibrogram method okay, HVI they use the fibrogram method. Next is the the evaluation of fiber fineness. So, fiber fineness normally in any other engineering material if we want to know the fineness we simply calculate the measure the the diameter any material. So, fineness of a rod, fineness of wire. So, it is a simply measure the diameter, but textile material it is a complex material here we cannot measure directly the diameter because of various reasons that those we will discuss detail because the fiber they are not uh, circular in nature, they are not uniform. So, that we have to measure the fiber fineness indirectly and most popular uh, expression is that fiber mass per unit length that is the indication of fiber fineness. So, what are the importance of fiber fineness that we will discuss why do you want to measure the fiber fineness. So, this we will discuss here before we measure the we uh, discuss the methods okay. we must know the importance of fiber fineness then different methods of measurement there are various methods we will discuss each and every methods. First is the gravimetric method it is for cotton next is that gravimetric method for wool. So, there are two different gravimetric methods that we will discuss then microscopic method of measurement. So, microscopic method of measurement is basically for the fibers those who are actually circular in nature. So, that is basically for wool so we use microscopic method because wool more or less it is a circular in nature. So, that is why wool if we see 
cotton is expressed in terms of mass per unit length, but wool generally is expressed in terms of micron micrometer, because wool is little bit circular in nature. Wool is not expressed in gram per or mass per unit length, wool is expressed in terms of micron. Okay. Then method is that air flow method, which is indirect method of knowing the uh, fiber mass per unit length. Then optical fiber diameter analysis, this we will discuss OFDA and next is that light scattering method, fiber diameter analysis, FDA method, detailed we will discuss here. Okay. And another important method, it is a vibration method using the principle of vibration of stream, we can measure the uh, vibration, fiber mass per unit length. Okay. So, after evaluation of fiber fineness, next we will start the maturity. Maturity basically it is only it is a matter of the cotton, it is a uh, we, we, uh, maturity is limited to cotton, other fibers we do not uh, measure the maturity okay. and maturity affects the immature fiber affects the quality of material adversely. Okay. Those detail we will discuss. So, concept of maturity of cotton fiber. So, here we have mentioned the maturity of cotton, because we are not going to discuss maturity of other fibers and for definitely for uh, man made fibers we do not have, we do not need maturity. So, concept of maturity of cotton fiber and there are various parameters to express the degree of mat, uh, maturity that those we will discuss to understand these parameters. So, these parameters are degree of thickening, maturity ratio, maturity count. So, these are the expression of maturity. Then we will discuss the various methods of measurement of maturity. These methods are caustic soda and microscopic method, it is a very common method it is used for cotton fiber, that is obviously, cotton is um, we are uh, only concerned about cotton, caustic soda and microscope. Then caustic air method, it is indirect uh, method of measuring the maturity, which also takes care of which are uses by, uh, by using caustic soda also here, but method is different that we will discuss here. High volume instrument method of measurement of maturity, although here uh, they use the air flow method, affiche method of measurement of maturity. So, then double compression method of measurement of maturity, this we will discuss, near infrared method of measurement of maturity, image processing method of maturity. So, these are the methods we will discuss. Next we will discuss the basically two methods, which are very popular for very quick use, quick uh, data. Okay. One is called high volume instrument HVI and there in that instrument we test a number of characteristics together, it is not the sing single okay. length, fineness, strength everything we can test. even here we can test the uh, color, trash percentage that we test. So, this uh, age principle of HVI we will test and there how to analyze the data, this we will try to understand here. Similarly, an application of HVI. Then another set of method that is called advanced fiber information system, AFIS system, where again we will uh, see the sorry AFIS data analysis and uh, that uh, application of AFIS. After that, in the sixth segment, we will discuss the moisture in textile. Okay. So, first we will discuss the atmospheric condition and relative humidity, what is relative humidity, how to measure the relative humidity, this we will discuss here. And uh, there are two very commonly used term in textile, it is moisture regain and moisture content, this uh, terms we will discuss in detail, their relationship we will discuss, then hysteresis effect of uh, moisture then how to measure the moisture, quantity of moisture in textile. 
and um, what are the effects of moisture on fiber properties that we will discuss and what are the factors which affect the moisture regain of textile material and one important uh, application of moisture is that to calculate the correct invoice weight which is very important because we test the, we uh, actually uh, produce the material and customer is paying for the material not for the moisture but it's also not feasible to have to give the exact dry weight because textile materials are hygroscopic in nature the moisture has to be there moisture will be there we cannot avoid so internationally it is expect, ex, accepted that the moisture has to be there the standard allowable moisture is there and considering that allowable moisture so we can calculate the correct invoice weight so the process of calculating how to calculate and what are the uses we will discuss here. Okay. Next is that linear density of yarn. So, linear density means the mass per unit length or length per unit mass because there are two process one is a direct process of measurement direct system which is expressed in terms of mass per unit length and indirect system is that length per unit mass. So, that this detailed we will discuss and their interrelationships we will discuss and one important thing is that a particular material for a particular yarn we use a particular system there are systems like uh, for filament we use a particular system of measurement like a denier is the system we express. Uh, for polyester or some any filament man made filament, but for cotton we use English count like for oersted we use metric count like that. So, that this we will discuss and their interrelationship we will discuss A conversion of linear densities of different systems. Okay. Then the linear density of folded and plied yarn suppose we know the linear density of a single yarn what will be the linear density of say plied yarn of different linear density. So, this uh, we will discuss here and then methods of measurement there are various methods of measurement of linear density of yarn. Then yarn twist which is very important for staple yarn. So, first uh, we will discuss the effect of yarn twist in staple yarn. So, first effect is the strength, strength uh, changes with the twist of the yarn, then application of yarn twist. So, yarn twist we can uh, use at a different way, different uh, applications are there like if we want to produce a shadow effect, we can go for different mix up of um, z twist or s twist. Okay different types of twist mixing we can do and what are the different twist levels it twist is expressed in terms of uh, twist per unit length say twist per inch twist per centimeter and what is a tm twist multiplier. So, which is actually indirectly which is express which uh, is uh, correlating is the twist angle. So, this we will discuss here and measurement of twist. So, um, there are various methods of measurement of twist this we will discuss here. So, for single yarn there are uh, methods and for plied yarn there. So, this methods we will discuss here then yarn and fabric hairiness. So, hairiness of yarn is most of the cases it is a undesirable. So, we must know the level of hairiness so that we can take precaution. So, what is hairiness we will uh, try to see various causes of hairiness and problems what are the problems which creates uh, created by hairiness and then we will discuss the measurement techniques of hairiness. So, for yarn also and also for fabric hairiness fabric surface hairiness we will discuss. Next is that 
which is extremely important for appearance of uh, material which is evenness or irregularity of yarn. Okay. So, types of irregularity there are different types of irregularities are there that uh, we will discuss expression for irregularity like u percent, u percent is that which is percent mean deviation. Irregularity we can express in types of coefficient of variation also this we will discuss here limit irregularity and index of irregularity which is extremely important to know that the index of irregularity means it to compare the irregularity of uh, two materials of different characteristics. Okay. This uh, we can uh, compare and it uh, give indicates the performance of a particular machine, particular system. Then addition and reduction of irregularity. So, how to increase the irregular, how in irregularity is added or how irregularity is reduced, this we will discuss. Typically, if we stretch any material, if we stretch any strand, we add irregularity, but if we double, if we actually multiple, if we actually use uh, more than one strand, then we are reducing the irregularity and we will see there are some equations how to calculate the addition and reduction of irregularity, we will discuss. Then variance length curves we will discuss, causes and effects of irregularities, classification of variations like a random irregularity and periodic irregularity. We will see the random irregularity is not that serious. The most critical irregularity is the periodic irregularity. Random irregularity gives the uh, poor, poorer performance, but periodic irregularity which is not acceptable at all. So, this we have to will discuss how to identify the periodic irregularity, uh, the location of periodic irregularity due to fault in uh, machinery part, this we will discuss here. Then measurement of evenness and data analysis. So, uh, that uh, evenness measurement how to measure the evenness this we will discuss here and different data analysis of uh, evenness. Okay. And related to evenness and irregularity another is that it is a yarn fault. So, it is a irregularity it is a different types of fault like long thick fault, long thin fault, uh, slabs this faults we uh, how to classify this faults this we will discuss in this segment. Okay. Next is the tensile testing of material, okay, textile material. Okay. So, tensile testing there are uh, various factors which affect the strength of fiber. Then tensile testing terminologies, there are various terminologies like uh, initial modulus, tenacity, breaking elongation. So, all these terms we will discuss here. Yield point. So, this we will discuss and uh, we will try to clarify the doubts, various confusions are there among the students. So, what is the how to convert the load elongation curve to stress strain curve. So, these things we will discuss here. Then factors affecting the test result, tensile test result. Okay. So, physical factors we will discuss here like uh, factors affecting if it is as we have discussed earlier that is the length of the material, gauge length of the material it affects speed of test. So, this affect the test result okay, for a particular material and related calculation we will do. Okay. And uh, then tensile testing instruments are divided into three categories based on the principle of testing. One is called CRE constant rate of elongation, another is C R L constant rate of loading and a third one is constant rate of traverse. Now, the confusion comes between constant rate of elongation and constant rate of traverse. I am trying to test the tensile testing. So, the my left hand is the it is a fixed jaw okay. and here it is a right hand there is a 
moving jaw. Let me draw here, this is the fixed jaw, okay. here it, this one is the moving jaw. And if this moving jaw moves at a constant rate, that means elongation will be at constant rate. So, this is will be a constant rate of elongation. Now, next is that this fixed jaw, this is a moving jaw. Okay. This jaw is moving in such a fashion that loading on the yarn is at the same rate loading on the yarn increases at the same rate. Okay. Suppose 1 kg per minute, okay. one say 1 whatever 1 centinewton, 1 newton per minute. At that rate the testing is taking place. The loading is increasing. So, it is a fixed. So, then we will call it as C R L constant rate of loading. So, the instruments are there which will ensure the increase in load at constant rate. Okay. But what about the constant rate of traverse? Here the thing is that this 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 one is movable jaw okay this one is movable jaw but the other jaw it's not fixed here this jaw also moves to measure to actually excite to send signal to the load measuring system. This jaw is moving at a constant rate. This the bottom jaw is moving at constant rate, top jaw is not fixed, top jaw also moves, but not at this rate, at the rate of bottom jaw. That means, it is neither the CRE nor the CRL. So, that is why this method is termed as C R L C R T due to the fact that this bottom jaw is traversing at constant rate okay. and this detailed method will discuss in during the course. Okay. And uh, next is that tensile testing methods different testing methods we will discuss. It is uh, we will start with the fiber bundle testing, then single fiber testing, then yarn tensile testing and fabric tens tensile testing. They have their various standard uh, methods are there, we will discuss in detail. Next comes the serviceable testing. Okay. It takes care of the tearing testing, busting testing, okay, rubbing testing. Okay. So, this, are, this is actually these are related to serviceability, it is during use we actually the fabric counteract all this type of issues. These are not regular testing, okay. like tear testing, tearing only occurs occasionally, okay. when there is some sharp object comes into and also some hooks are there. Okay. So, that is why these are serviceability testing. We will start with the various factors which affect the tear testing. Then tear testing of fabric, obviously it, uh, fabrics we are talking about here. There are different types of testing, it is a single reef tear testing which is known as tongue tear testing. So, we will discuss the, the this testing, then double reef tear testing, wing reef tear testing and element of tear testing. Okay. Various tear testings we will discuss and first three testing single reef, double reef, wing reef testing, it requires the 
tensile testing instrument and that is why this, this instrument, this uh, three methods they follow CRE principle. If it is asked among this which is which are the uh, methods which follow the CRE principle, these three methods they follow the CRE principle, constant rate of elongation principle. But element of testing it follows the it is uh, it is a sudden impact ok, sudden impact pendulum principle it is ok. It measures the tearing energy this we will discuss here. Then comes another serviceability testing which is a busting. Busting is also not normally it is not common testing it is for a specific application we test and there are various technical textile where busting is extremely important like parachute fabric or filter fabric where we need to test busting. Normally we do not test busting for uh, apparel fabric, but for technical fabric it is required busting test. like for uh, geotextile busting testing is important where the direction of force is not unidirection it is a multidirectional force application. So, we have to understand we uh, basic understanding of uh, busting strength and their importance we will discuss first then busting strength of fabric uh, measurement we will discuss the diaphragm type of busting strength ball busting strength ok. Then abrasion and peeling. So, uh, during application during service the fabric gets abraded it is not required for during production, but during application it gets abraded. So, abrasion testing is required. So, basic understanding of uh, peeling will and what is peeling will how peeling forms this we will discuss here and grading and measurement of peeling. So, how to grade the peeling uh, that we will discuss and ICI uh, peeling box there random tumbling peeling testing is there then peeling test by Martindel abrasion tester this we will discuss and basic understanding of abrasion. So, peeling and abrasion they are interrelated, but abrasion is something else basically which abrades the fabric it may or may not generate the peeling, but it actually deteriorate the quality of fabric where we will discuss factor affecting the abrasion resistance. So, for a um, instrument if we measure there are factors if we change the factor the you will get a different abrasion res result ok. And measurement abrasion resistance that we will discuss Martindale abrasion tester is there accelerator abrasion tester is there. So, this we will discuss. Next comes to the low stress mechanical characteristics of fabric which is related with the fabric handle where we apply low stress it is not high stress we are not going to go up to the breaking point ok. So, the low stress mechanical characteristics it is uh, talks about the bending. So, bending of fabric will measure will uh, understand and uh, then shear characteristics of fabric these are our uh, low stress characteristics then drape characteristics will measure drape coefficient will try to measure see and then we will discuss the detail in detail the KESF method Kawata evaluation system of fabric KESF which deals with the all the low stress mechanical characteristics. Another uh, low stress mechanical characteristics instrument is the FAST FAST like bending we will discuss a different types of bending cantilever bending the loop type bending. So, all this uh, bending we will discuss here ok. And uh, next is that the transmission characteristics of textile material. Transmission characteristics starts with the air permeability. So, basically any fluid transmission through material we will discuss measurement of air permeability we will uh, discuss. Then liquid transmission, so wetting and wicking, so ab absorption of uh, liquid and uh, transmission of liquid wicking characteristics we will discuss here. Transplanar wicking or transverse wicking that is it is a cross plane across the thickness of the fabric how the at what rate the liquid transmits that we will discuss here. Then in plane along the plane the 
of liquid transmission characteristics we will discuss. Then vertical or longitudinal wicking characteristics, then water transmission through geotextile that is uh, the transmission characteristics of water through geotextile, there are methods of measurement we will discuss here. Then moisture vapor transmission through material, so there are various methods of measurement of moisture vapor, I am not going in detail. So, that we will discuss the moisture vapor transmission, uh, there are cup methods that they are like a sweating guarded hot plate method is there, so, all these methods we will discuss. Then heat transmission, so heat transmission is guarded hot plate method is there, then tog meter is there, so heat transmission measurement of heat transmission through textile material we will discuss. So, this is overall uh, the total uh, outline of the course, overview of the course. So, from uh, next class we will start the actual course, actual test methods and we will start with the statistical or sampling method. Okay. There is a normal uh, condition method, it is the normal heat transmission at normal room temperature and extreme condition in flame condition how to how the heat is getting transmitted okay and uh, and that's all uh, thank you